Okay, so let's take a look at topographic contours this week, a huge part of understanding maps in our world through the lens of, of to topographic maps in particular. Take a look at those later on here. Uh, you've probably used these uh, frequently in physical geography lecture, or at least seen them in the books. Um, and yeah, just to jump in, what we mean by a, a contour is a, a line on a map that connects points of the same elevation and drawn at a consistent or regular interval. Okay, so this is known as the contour interval. And it must be consistent throughout the map. It's important to keep that in mind as well. And it, it, they, they consistently are, unless the cartographer has uh, been out to lunch. So, yeah, depending on the scale and the relief, uh, USGS, what you commonly hear abbreviated for the U.S. Geological Survey, it's the most common maker of contour maps that you'll find, topographic maps. They can have a contour interval of 10 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet, or 40 feet. So a range of different scales of maps will have different contour intervals. Uh, rules that govern contours are that they often extend well beyond the neat line. You can just think of the edge of the map. And as I say here, the neat line is the map's edge or the frame, similar to how we talk about the, the frame in a photo, not the actual frame when a photo is hanging on the wall, but just the, the edge of the photo. Uh, contours do not cross. And when space close together, they depict rapid horizontal change. And when space far apart, conversely, they suggest gradual horizontal change. So to you know, as a very brief example, contour lines closer on a map. Let's uh, click down to one real quickly here. It illustrates this. Uh, closer sections, contour intervals being closer on the map, contour lines being closer. This would be a steeper slope coming down this mountain on the far side, the face that we don't see in the upper part of the image, versus a more widely spaced uh, contour set of contour lines would indicate a more gentle slope. So it's a really fascinating way of, of depicting uh, physical relief on a, on a flat surface. So there's our, just switching back to the slide we were just on and those two points. Uh, a couple more quote-unquote rules that govern contours. The isolines cannot split or merge. So here we're just calling the contour lines isolines, just like we studied in the barometric pressure uh, weeks and labs. Iso lines or iso bars in those cases are just areas where it's the same. So iso being uh, indicating or meaning the same. Isometric pressure is you know, pressure without moving. Uh, the ISO, you know, comes up in a lot of fancy Latin words, you could say. I not even, we don't even need to call them fancy, really. Closed ISO lines are usually higher or lower than the values outside of the closed ISO line. Usually higher, but sometimes lower. Uh, closed meaning they just form a, a complete circle. Contours with uh, hachure marks indicate a depression. So depression contours are the same elevation as the adjacent contour on the lower side of the slope. And isolines, they represent an effective method for determining elevation values. Sorry for missing a, a V there, or a U between the L and the E. Uh, between contours, this involves interpolation. So to interpolate means to estimate the values between two known values. So here we have a, a mock uh, contour map, topographic map, and a contour, the contour interval will always be stated in the key for any contour, for any topographic map. 
And so knowing that the contour interval is 20 feet, and we can see that there's four contour lines between the 200 foot elevation and the 300 foot, we know that those each represent 20 feet in elevation. And so this line would be the 220 foot elevation, this would be the 240, 260, and 280. Therefore, when we're asked to find uh, or estimate a specific value based on a landmark or a feature on a map, we can estimate, here I've written these out, approximately 210, a little less than halfway between these two lines, these two um, contour lines, the 200 and the 225. And likewise here, we're, you know, fairly close to the 280 line, much farther than the 260 line. So we'll put that one at about 275. And these can even, we can extend because we know it's the same map. We know this is the 320 foot elevation. So even though we don't see the next line we can estimate at about or interpolate for that matter interpolate some would pronounce it at about 330 feet so other things to keep in mind are that the top of the hill or the summit is usually higher than the uppermost closed contour we'll take a look at that a, bit, a little bit later as well the closed contour that, that decreases in elevation is a depression. These, as I said, these are depicted by the Hachur lines along the contour on the side leading into the depression. And the Hachur contours are called depression contours. Hachur, you can just think of as a fancy name for little hash marks, little horizontal lines, or uh, I should say perpendicular lines extending off of the contour line. We'll see those on a map in a little bit. This is just, again, the, the image we saw earlier, a great depiction how a, uh, if it, 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 the topography of an area, right? The, the physical relief of a, of a mountain range, in this case, of two mountains, can then be mapped onto a flat surface using these rings, essentially, of, of contours. And so the, the point on the previous slide that the, the hill or the summit is usually higher than the uppermost closed contour is because the, the very top, we can see this illustrated here, the very top of this mountain is actually a bit higher than that uppermost, uh, that we could call it the, the 50 feet or whatever the uh, unit of measurement is, maybe 50 meters uh, for this mountain. Maybe a low-lying coastal, maybe a sea atoll or something. But uh, my point being that within this ring, even though this innermost contour line is going to be 50 feet, let's just say, in elevation, you can see that actually in real life, the, 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 the actual topography extends above that. A closed contour line that is situated between two contours will have the same value as the adjacent upslope contour line. So for instance, a knoll or an outcrop on the side of a hill. And unless otherwise marked, the elevation of a depression contour will have the same value as the adjacent lower contour. So it's just the, the inverse of, of the first statement. And that might be a little depression or uh, you know, some sort of opposite land feature of a of a knoll or an outcrop, a little micro cave, for instance. So rules of the V and the Y when crossing streams, contours form an upstream pointing V pattern. It makes it seem like you're out there crossing the stream yourself. If upstream pointing V pattern is not apparent, the confluence of the two streams usually forms a downstream pointing Y pattern. Contours with a downslope pointing V pattern indicate a ridge, an arete, or divide between drainage basins. And we can see that here in, in this map with the 
uh, crossing stream right about here and contours form an upstream pointing V pattern. And so looking at this, if that's upstream pointing the V, you know that this stream is is going down for lack of, uh, you know, generally speaking, we could say this is flowing south. We don't know without seeing the full map if, if this is, you know, if it's a typical north orientation. And then we can we can double check that or confirm it we see the elevation decreasing as you come down the river or stream based on knowing that this contour line is this more bold line right here is 2400 feet in elevation and the one up above is 2500 and how do we know 2500 well it's halfway between the 24 and the 26. let's see there's one two three four again four contour contour intervals between the main ISO lines here, between the uh, thicker contour inter contour lines. Um, so likewise, we know that those are 20 foot intervals. Likewise, meaning in reference to our uh, example a little bit earlier. And yeah, so, and this is the, the, the classic 7.5 minute topographic map meaning a scale of uh, 1 to 24,000. Uh, these maps are uh, yeah, really neat to get your hands on once you get back on campus. You can have access to them. Uh, sometimes they're still for sale in outdoor stores. Sometimes they can be ordered uh, next to nothing online from the USGS. Uh, notice that when crossing streams, the dashed blue lines, of course, that is, these streams, the contours point upstream. Contours will point downslope on ridges, like the one above the O and the N in Jefferson. So, this again, this ridge here ex extending downhill, downslope on the ridges. And that the contours with downslope pointing V patterns uh, that we pointed out on the previous slide here, indicated a ridge uh, or at or divide between two drainage basins you can see that illustrated here on a uh, it's also a con it's a contour map it also has some uh, perspective view or re shading relief as is common on some of the uh, nicer contour maps um, you can see for instance here there's it's it's not a very sharp v but these we know that we're going downhill here um, based on the orientation of the v's and how that separates two basins you have this basin here and another drainage basin over here if it was a more detailed map you'd be able to see a slightly uh, dotted blue line uh, extending up the creek um, at the, the crux of this basin and it's, all, it's, it's common to have trails on these ridge lines because they make such a great slope and contour for uh, running a trail up on ridges like that. It's, it's more rare to have a, a, a creek line trail. They, they do exist, but you have issues with washout from, uh, from the downsloping water. Uh, yeah, often more vegetated especially here in our neck of the woods in Angel Island. Uh, oftentimes, ridge lines will be drier and uh, more exposed. Um, less vegetation, that is. So, there's, uh, a, yeah, what I consider a pretty straightforward uh, set of 20 questions for our lab this week. And I look forward to your questions and discussions. Okay, take care.